So Prime Minister Modi delivered a motion of thanks to the president's address recently in the parliament and it was it was a fantastic speech, you know, and people are talking about it in social media because it was such a great speech. I'm going to give you a few highlights of the speech. My name is Sham Sharma. Welcome to the Sham Sharma Show. Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome to another edition of the Sham Sharma Show. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you. So Prime Minister Modi recently delivered a motion of thanks to the president's address in the parliament. And again, like I mentioned before, it was a fantastic speech. It was a searing speech. It was a scathing speech. And it was that firebrand Modi that we all know and love from before 2014, from when he was chief minister of Gujarat. And, and that's the guy we voted to power. And that's the guy we voted to become prime minister. And it was great to see him back. So in the past few years, all of those allegations that the Congress party has made towards the Modi government. He answered pretty much all of them in this speech and I'm going to give you a few highlights of this speech as well because it was a, about a 90 minute speech so if you want to see the whole speech I have the link below available in the description so you can go check out the whole speech if you'd like as well. I would recommend you check it out because it is a great speech but here's the Cliff Notes version. One of the things that he said in the speech was democracy is not the Nehru's and the Gandhi's gift to India. Democracy has always existed in some form in India. India has a very democratic culture. India has uh, a lot of democratic traditions. So you have accounts of Aryans, Anabasis of Alexander. You have Megasthenes' work. You have Kautilya's work. You have Panini's work. All of these works talk about various republics, Sangha, Gana, that were run mostly independently in central north and northwest India. Of course, they were under the ages of or the umbrella of a king. But a lot of these areas maintained semi-independently and semi-autonomously. And like I said before, India is a democratic culture. You know, the reason we have these so-called 33 million gods and goddesses in our, our culture and our religion is because Hindus don't believe that there is just one true path. Hindus believe that there is multiple ways to realize your faith. There are multiple ways to find your place in the world. And that makes for a very democratic tradition. Another thing that he talked about is that the Congress is responsible for dividing India and for creating the problems that exist today in Kashmir. He said that if Vallabhai Patel had been the Prime Minister instead of Jawaharlal Nehru, we would have not had the Kashmir problem. And Kashmir completely would be part of India and not illegally occupied by Pakistan. He also mentioned that 12 out of the 15 Congress committee had voted for Vallabhai Patel and the other three had abstained from voting or voted nota. And still, still Jawaharlal Nehru was chosen over Vallabhai Patel. And he says, what kind of democracy is this? You talk about democracy, you act like you're the custodians of democracy and you don't allow any democracy to function in your own party. And I completely agree with that because if Vallabhai Patel had been the Prime Minister of India, I have no doubt that Kashmir in its entirety would be part of India right now. You know, look at the stuff that he did when he was Home Minister. Look at Junagar, look at Hyderabad, and look at that there is no problems in Junagar and Hyderabad which are remotely even similar to the problems in Kashmir today. And then he also talks about Rahul Gandhi's election to the presidentship of the Congress party, he said it wasn't an election, it was a coronation. An election is a process where other people are considered and other people actually have a chance. This wasn't an election, nobody else even filed a nomination. And he talked about how people in the party said, you know, first there was Jahangir, then there was Shah Jahan, and then came Aurangzeb. And it's true, this is the party of nepotism, this is the party of despotism. So it is really funny and it is really ironic when this party talks about elections, democracy and equality and things like that. And again, talk Talking about the Kashmir problem, I actually want to add another area that the, because of the Congress party has seen so much trouble recently, and that is the Northeast, because the Northeast has never really been in the Congress party's plans. You know, they, they never really took any serious steps to integrate the Northeast into mainstream India, which has led to all the discontent in the Northeast, which has led to all the insurgency in the Northeast. And the Look East policy of the Congress government was mainly on paper. It didn't really take any concrete steps. And the Modi government, when it came into power under the Act Eats policy, at least it's taken in some concrete steps with the advantage of Samsung but with the huge infrastructure projects that it is undertaking in the Northeast and with now the private investment that is starting to come into the Northeast as well which is going to lead to more jobs which is going to lead to more prosperity and which is hopefully going to lead to reduction in insurgency incidents as well and then he said for decades one party devoted all their energies to serving one family the interests of the nation were looked over for just the interests of one family and that's very true. 
you know, it's it's been the whole Nehru Gandhi kind of family. Look at the way they've treated other leaders like Vallabhai Patel, like Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, who was pretty much thrown to the wolves, like Lal Bahadur Shastri. And then he talked about how this party pretends to be the party of the uh, party of the people, party of the lower cross, party of the downtrodden and the underprivileged, and so on and so forth, the Congress Party, and how this party actually treats other people. Your words don't really show how or what your opinions are and what your feelings are towards people. Your actions, the way you treat those people, actually shows what your opinions are about those people. And a great example of this is what Rajiv Gandhi did to Tian Jaya when he called him a buffoon and when he publicly castigated him just because he was mildly inconvenienced. And and you don't even have to look that far. Look at the way they treated Mr. Modi when he was running for election. Look at the way a lot of Congress leaders called him a chaiwala. Chaiwala, what will a chaiwala know about running the country? And here's the thing, they don't say chaiwala in a nice way. They meant chaiwala as an insult. Like, why is chaiwala an insult? Why is a poor man or a poor person who is just trying to work hard to provide for his or her family, why is that something to be looked down upon? Why is that used as an abuse? And they called him a niche. And what is, the, what is that word even supposed to mean? Again, your platitudes don't display your opinions. The way you treat people actually display your opinions of people. This is not the party of the people. This is the party of the Lutians infrastructure. This is the party of those special interests. And I'm very happy that Mr. Modi called them out on that as well. Then Mr. Modi talked about the countries that had gained independence around the same time as India and how they had actually surpassed them. It is because of this socialist model of governance that the Congress party took, which has been bogged down by tons and tons of red tape and which has been bogged down by tons and tons of corruption. Like look at countries like South Korea, look at countries like Japan, which was completely devastated in the Second World War. And look at how far these countries have come with when they started around the same time as India and from the same position as India. And then he talks about the Congress mocking various attempts that the Modi government has taken to make India a better place and make India a better country. And they say that they mock these attempts and that they mock these measures because they realize that if these measures become truly successful, people are going to realize that they want to vote the BJP into power again. People are going to realize that they don't want the Congress party around. And so it is in their best interest to ensure that these programs fail. And he said that you don't need a new India. You need an India where the law bends its knees to the powerful. And he gave examples of these, like the emergency, like the Sikh riots, and all the various scams that the Congress government was involved in. And the reason this was such a fantastic speech to watch, and the reason why people are talking so much about this speech is because that's the Modi that people missed. That's the Modi that people want to see more of. I feel like ever since he got elected, he has attempted to be more of a statesman and to kind of reconcile everybody. And that's important. And that's very important in a leader. I'm glad he does that. But it's also very important for people to see that he still has that fiery firebrand side of him. Sometimes they do need to see that person who they elected in 2014, who is not afraid to stand up to that infrastructure, the Lutians infrastructure, who is not afraid to stand up to the Congress party, and who's not afraid to stand up to these pseudo-secular people. And I hope this is the beginning of us seeing more and more of that person leading up to the general elections, because I think that's going to be very important. Because, you know, people keep talking about these disillusioned Modi supporters that mo voted for Mr. Modi and, and were disappointed or whatever. And I feel like that kind of demeanor and I feel like that kind of language and I feel like that kind of attitude from Mr. Modi every now and then will help bring those people back into the fold because that's what people enjoy about him. That's what people like about him. We need to see more of that. It was a fantastic speech. I would recommend you check it out. All right, now before I go, I really want to show you this one clip from the speech where... Uh, so Modi was trying to speak about something and Renuka Chaudhary from Congress started shouting and heckling Mr. Modi. So Venkai and I do asked her to calm down and asked her to sit down and she started laughing and she started heckling even more loudly and then this is what Modi said. Sabapati ji, meri aapko prathna hai Renuka ji ko kusmat ki jiye. Ramayar Chirar ke baat, aisi hasi sunde ka aaj sa ubha ki mila hai. That's funny. And my favorite part is Uma Bharti's reaction to it. Look at it. That's my favorite part. I think it's a funny joke. People are saying, oh, this is a sexist joke. How dare he, you know, talk about a woman this way and that's sexist and that's horrible. And no, it's just a joke. All right. If, if somebody, if a guy laughed like that and somebody compared him to a Rakshas, that would still be a funny joke. Nobody would accuse that person of making a joke on that man as a sexist joke. It's just a joke. 
you know, sometimes jokes are just jokes and people should take them as that. All right, and that's today's show, guys. That's the highlights of the speech a little bit as well. Please let me know if I missed something. And if you liked today's episode, please make sure to thumbs up today's video. Please make sure to share the video and please make sure to subscribe to the show's channel. Again, I'm going to be back on... I'm going to be back this weekend, actually, with an interview with Sean Binder from Hindu Lifestyle. So again, if you have any questions for me or Sean, make sure to let me know on my Twitter account right here. I will see you again on the weekend. And until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you soon.